Hello, and welcome to the Eventual Knits podcast. My name is Leah Via, and I am known as Miss underscore LJV on Instagram and uh, Eventual on Ravelry. Today is Monday, July 20th, 2020, and I think this is episode 27. I'm coming to you from my lovely home in the Twin Cities, or just outside of the Twin Cities in Minnesota. Today was a much nicer day than the last several days. Um, it has been like super muggy and hot and humid. I am, as you can see, in a sweater because I have central air conditioning, which is always running to some degree and I tend to run cold. So um, let's talk about my shirt first. I am wearing my Gigi Made It sweater. I love it. It is um, super comfy. It is very soft. Um, it is definitely a nice like wearing around the house shirt. I think I read a couple reviews on the site saying that like it wasn't as soft as they thought it was. So I like from the texture, from like the way that the texture kind of looks, it looks terry cloth-ish. So I expected a very terry cloth feel, but the inside is not not at all terry cloth it's smooth on the inside so i don't know what they're talking about and as someone who has sensitivities to things i uh i would disagree but i love it i also got um a stand in the gap t-shirt and it from gg made it and it is amazing. It is a neon yellow with brown and white um, bubble with Stand in the Gap on it. And speaking of Stand in the Gap, um, I got a Stand in the Gap mug, which was a collaboration with Magpie Fibers, and Gigi made it. So it says, commit to change. So. Um, and Gigi says it way better than I can ever possibly think to say it, but basically she's saying like identify those gaps in um, in you know where change isn't being made or where um, you know if you have privilege you should apply your privilege and use it for good and stand in those gaps where you know um, there isn't a lot of support or advocacy advocacy happening and you know basically just use your powers for good and do what's right and you know be a barrier whether that's a verbal or physical barrier just be that person so I really support her message she says it way more um, uh, in a way that makes more sense uh, than I have but it's like I, I know the feeling and I know what she means so yeah today um, I actually have quite a bit of knitting. I haven't really finished a lot, but I do have um, a decent amount of things that I've made at least some progress progress on. I tried to say projects on. So um, let's get to my, I think, one finished object. So the finished object that I have for you today is I finally finished Steve's socks. Um, if I am being completely honest, I will say that I finished them this evening so not too long ago but I still finished them um, they are the twizzle socks by Becca something I think I'll put the uh, pattern below it's a free pattern um, because it's a free pattern if you are having difficulty with Ravelry um, and you want to knit these socks and you don't have this pattern I'm sure there's tons of variations of, of this on the internet but if you don't have it, message me, or leave a comment, let me know, and I can get that for you. So I followed my, like, just came up with or, like, really thought out recipe for a sock for Steve. It is, um, you know, a certain amount of ribbing, a certain amount of repeats for the um, ankle, slip stitch heel. You can definitely see the slip stitch this time. I feel like it was difficult to see last time. The gusset with my little patented, I think. Oh, it's twisted. It's a, this is a ladder. I have a ladder there. And yeah. Did myself a little toe. I feel like this side always looks better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at how nice and clean that is. 
And then, of course, this is the sock that is not on a sock blocker because I only have one sock blocker for Steve's feet. Oh, look how small it is when it's not on the sock blocker. Um, I don't know if I've talked about the sock blockers recently. The sock blockers were made in a glow forge by uh, my friend Sean and she measure, measured our feet and she of course uh, customized them and Steve wears lots of bandanas so uh, she customized him a little bandana on there and then um, she made a little rolled up little sand shoe going on there and like oh, a little bandana. Um, if you ever see mine, one of mine says my handle, Miss LJV, and then the other one um, says Dunkin' Donuts Forever, and that's like a joke more than anything, but don't get me wrong, I love me some Dunkin' Donuts cream with a little bit of coffee. <laughs> but anyway, that's that's just like a fun little thing. Um, there aren't other Dunkin' Donuts around here? I don't know. Honestly, I don't remember if they've opened one or anything like that, but that's in Wisconsin, but yeah, so um, this is in a String Theory Colorworks. Um, I will, again, I always, 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 I don't think I have the band anymore. I always forget the color, but I have it like written down somewhere, so I will put it in the show notes. If you don't know where my show notes are, they are in the description of this YouTube video. So if you ever want to refresh yourself on um, what it is that I I'm talking about, especially if it's a yarn or a bag or where I got a stitch marker, like I try to track all that stuff in the description so you can just click and look um, if I like don't have the mental capacity or the time to put overlays. But even then I try to include it in the description in case, um, you know, users can't access visually because that the overlays do not appear in any um, sort of screen reader or any type of situation like that. So I will include everything down there. And again, if you really want to know something, feel free to ask, message me, comment, double check. I'll let you know. But he's extremely excited to wear these. As he works in the basement, um, it gets very cold down there. And so he always likes a pair of wool socks uh, while he works. Okay, so that's it for my finished objects. I haven't actually been doing a, like a whole whole ton of like significant knitting um it's been like I mentioned in my last episode it's been kind of a rough month a really rough month at work and so I have been doing a lot of work when I should not be working and I uh, saw so that really tanks my ability to knit and uh, my energy levels and I've been doing a lot of sleeping and so but I've been trying to do little bits here and there so Let's get on to some of my works in progress. The first thing that I want to show you guys I've made just a little bit of progress on is my Colorful Keepsake by Tina Say of Tina Say Knits. And this is what I've got so far. So um, the colorful keepsake is, she just said, you know, pick three different colors in like high contrast and it's just, uh, it started out as a mystery knit along. I have long since, uh, that has ended. <laughs> I think I was like just, like I was midway through clue two when the make along ended, but I, I, so I'm getting towards the end of clue two. And I just chose three random colors that I normally would not pair together that were all just one-offs of, um, that I thought, that I thought would be interesting. Uh, the camera showed a little, little snagged yarn there. I'm going to be honest, I have, um, that looks really bad in the camera. It does not look really bad in real life. I have left this out for quite a while, like literally out of a bag, like on the bed slash on the nightstand. Okay, I really love this flower motif. I showed this last time that I showed this shawl. It almost looks like paw prints from here. Maybe it is supposed to be paw prints. I thought it was supposed to be flowers, but it kind of looks like paw prints. And then, so where I had left off the last time I showed it is 
here. And I have knit this much since then. So, and then the stitch marker I have is um, a color changing hair motif. I honestly, uh, color changing as a newbie. I can't remember if this one is blue or pink. It's like, it's like, it's honestly like really close to one of like the blue or maybe like a, uh, like a hot, hot pink magenta. Um, these stitch markers are super cool. They are done by Whitney Marie Anderson. And um, it's one of those things where like, you know, she tries to make stitch markers that, you know, show a variety of skin shades and not um, like white. And I really, 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 really like her work and I just want, I want to make sure to support her. So the, what I've tended to do is that when she does a shop update, I wait a few days to see, you know, what people um, buy first and buy the most. And then whatever um, is left, since all of them are so cute and so amazing, I just um, buy whatever is remaining. And so this was one of them and it looks really cute. I have, I think, either... I don't remember if I did it in my stories or if I did it on an actual post, but um, I showed the UV on these and they're so cute. So anyway, I've only done a couple inches since um, last time, but I mean, it's getting, you know, I think this needle is 32 inches, so it's getting pretty wide. I can't wait to actually have it be done and wear it. Um, again, I will put the yarns in my show notes. Um, I believe the green is a mint chocolate chip by brazen stitchery the pink is a solid by knit circus i think which is super unusual for me but yes i believe this is semi-solid by knit circus and then um the blue i believe is called ocean and it was by four crows let me just check and see if I have the, of course I don't. Oh. Cat, the cat and crow. Haha, <laughs> I have one. <laughs> that's the store actually though. That's not the yarn brand. I think it's four crows. Anyway, and they are all, or, and this whole thing is being stored in my, um, my Follow Your Bliss bag by Nerdbird Makery. So that is that stuff. That is fun. It's a shawl, working on a shawl. The next thing that I uh, am working on is the Empower Cowl Bandana or Hat Dana by um, Is it Casapinka? And I am almost done. I am on the border. So basically what you do is you, it's a free pattern and it is encouraging people to remember to vote and we're empowering each other and, we, and you're, um, you're supposed to do some kind of purple. And so I have this purple that I honestly, I'm like, oh, why can't I? remember uh, this yarn I believe is called purple people or people's purple something like that but it's a free pattern there's also a crochet pattern by someone else um online as well and it is sort of like an awareness on voting like making sure that you vote that you have power so it's called the empower cowl um, making sure that you realize that you have some power with your voting. Okay, I found it. The yarn is Hot Knit Yarn Trevor Morgan DK in Purple Purpose. Not Purple People, Purple Purpose. And so it is a, um, this is actually DK. I believe that original pattern for this calls for a worsted, but DK is fine with me. It's just a little bit more knitting. Um, and it's like this fun little pooling purple and um, it, it isn't a white, I not well, a little bit kind of looks maybe a little pure white, but mostly it's like a lavender purple. And um, 
I have been working on it and now so you have the two edges and then you knit it wide and then now I'm going to be working until um, this edge here becomes thick and then you connect it together and it can be a cowl or it can be um, you know a little bandana something to that effect however you want to wear it it's yours you can do both um, because this is mostly garter I did um, give it to Steve occasionally to work on and so um, I really like I like um, seeing the differences in in our knitting and it's interesting to just see how tension works and um, when what happens you know just like little lessons in showing him like what happens when your tension is really tight or what happens when you accidentally um, wrap the yarn you make a yarn over but then also do a knit and so you have an extra loop and then what happens when you loosen that loop you know and I like seeing those little um, irregularities in in the in the cowl because it doesn't matter to me at all what it looks like no one's gonna notice it um, even if they did I don't care you know it's one of those things that um, just adds like a little touch I love handing him my knitting and being like hey knit me a row the socks that I knit for him I gave to him and he knit a few rows on that as well um, it's just really precious to me when he is interested and wants to um, do that uh, the stitch markers again that I have on here to um, the right side stitch marker is um, the little little um, hair puffs girl love her she's so cute so cute so cute and then on the other end for the um, to show the where the edging is going to be is my little Xbox controller. Yeah. Which is. I'll put it in the show notes. I haven't bought from her in a long time. So, yeah, I'm almost done. By the time I have my next podcast, I will definitely be done with this. I mean, I could pro I'll probably finish it tomorrow, if not tonight. So, if you haven't knit one, knit an Empower cowl or bandana. Okay, the last thing that I want to show you that I'm working on that I that I'm actually working on. There's a few things that I like need to finish and need to keep working on, but I just haven't I haven't done anything on them in a while, so I'm not re-showing them. But um, this is a test knit. It's a secret test knit, but unlike I think again, I'm gonna see what it looks like in the camera. Unlike the other one, I think you really can't tell what what pattern I'm doing if I show the inside out. Um, I am using two yarns here. Oh no, I lost the tags already. I don't know, you guys, I work from home now. I'm always home. I don't know where, how I keep losing all of the all of the tags. I think what happens is, is when Steve's like picking things up and he's like, oh, do you need these? And I'll glance and like, I won't really look that hard. I'll just assume that all the tags that I need are in the bags or wherever they need to go. Ugh. So I don't know, I'll, I'll figure out what this is. Um, I probably have the, the literal tag, like, or the receipt in a bag, but this is a, the contrast color. It is so rich. Of course, my only complaint with the yarn that's spun like this is that it does do a thick and thin, um, and so I did end up with an extremely thin part um, that I, at the time, was like, oh, I'll just wrap the yarn around a few times and then knit through the whole thing and the whole bunch will go around and then you won't even notice. And it's like super annoying because it's the only place on this whole sweater, this is a sweater, of course I like to do sweater test knits. I do like to do shawl test knits too. Um, sweaters and shawls and I have done a pair of socks before um, two pairs of socks actually but it happens to be that this is right in the literal like I'm not even joking I swear it's like right in the front of, well it'd be like right here right in the front of the sweater it's super noticeable ah <laughs> so it's right here Okay, it looks really bad when I'm doing this, but like I'm trying to show you the like the wraps. 
so I, I feel like I'm not showing it very well uh, but the yeah there it is okay. so that was a bad idea it was late at night I don't know I was just trying something and I was really worried about the yarn eventually tearing because it felt really really thin um, what I should have done was cut it and gotten to the next thick part I feel like I've learned this lesson before but it's been a long time and so my plan is since I did wrap it around so many times I did it for two stitches I am going to take some of the I think yeah so when I was winding it because it was in one of those oblong balls and I hate dealing with those because every time you pull them then they jump around and it gets all whatever so I as you can see you know I caked it up and when I was caking it up there's just like one bunch that I just like lost my patience with and I was right at the end so I just cut it and so I just had this lump and conveniently for me the lump has a bunch of the sort of like gold-ish color and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it duplicate stitch um, I'm gonna cut the cut the thin yarn and then just tie it in the back and like hopefully that won't be a big deal so anyway um, yeah I feel like especially the top part of the collar is nothing like it's just it's just it's just knitting it's just straight stuck in it so I'm just gonna show you what that looks like I feel like it's like not although I think I have my warm filter on so I can't tell what the colors look like but um, yeah the colors are like just really rich and vibrant. Ooh, yeah, look at these. Look at these tones. Can you see them? I don't know if you can. Yeah, super nice. Um, and then my contrast color. Is um, this, I think this is it. don't remember if I find the tags I'll put it in it's like I want to say I don't know if this is a cascade or not I don't think it is no it's a Barocco okay I was like picturing so like I you know chance to go to my local yarn store just because I I signed up for the knit and I really wanted to get started and I I knew that I didn't have enough for a sweater in my stash in the yarn that she was calling for and or like the style that she was calling for and so I wanted to go to an LYS and check it out and I was hesitant to go but I figured like there probably wouldn't be a lot of people there it's a really small LYS to begin with and so it's not like packed with people I think there were only two other people who ended up in the shop while I, while Steve and I were there but it was like it's like a long shop like a long thin shop and so we just like you know stuck to our side or whatever but in my head I was like picturing like the different yarn sections so like part of the store is set up by fiber content so like there is a little section with a little sign that says like alpaca and this is silk and you know the whatever um this is cotton you know and but then the other half of the store is sort of set up like this is Malabrigo this is Cascade this is Barocco so um I was like picturing where we're at. I was like that's not the cascade section I don't buy cascade usually I don't like cascade I remember like cascade being a problematic brand is like a whole other thing um because it is but um I remember that when I first started knitting all the Harry Potter like scarves this was like I started knitting in 2007 I like 50% of the reason why I started knitting was because I wanted to knit something Harry Potter and I think I talk about this in one of my first episodes um I actually wanted to knit a Harry Potter book scarf which is like a teeny tiny what I really needed to do for that was like weaving or something um but anyway and when I finally got to look at the Harry Potter knits what was that book called it was like the original Harry Potter knits book or whatever and the all the different book scarf or all the different year scarves or whatever they were called 
based upon the movies like it was like the book yeah it was called book scarf in that it was like this is based off the book colors and this is based off the movie or movie one two three right um and <laughs> all of them were in cascade i think Cascade 220 and I remember being like what is Cascade 220? I lived in Grand Forks. I worked at Michael's like I had no idea what Cascade was. I had no idea like what how I could possibly substitute a yarn that was like close enough and like the colors seemed so perfect and I couldn't believe like the the variety of shades and I was like so jealous and that was before you just before you ordered yarn from the internet that was like not a thing in 2007 and so I just never made one um I I used um Kieran Simply Soft for like smaller things um like I made some like wristbands and like hats and stuff but um I never made a scarf I never made a Harry Potter scarf um eventually I did something like that but um the first time I came into contact with Cascade 220, I was like, what? This is so itchy. I would never want to put this against my skin. I just remember, I think it was the Cascade 220 Superwash, right? Um, yeah, anyway, that was just like a memory that's like burned into my brain because I had put Cascade on this pedestal because it seemed so amazing. And then when I came into contact with it, again, the aforementioned sensitivity, I was like, are you kidding me with this? <laughs> Anyway, this is Barocco. This is Barocco, probably vintage DK. But it is a, like, it's like a blue, but it's like heathered green, kind of. So, like, I don't know if you can see it, if it's looking gray or what it's looking like, but it is a, a heathered blue, and then, like, the undertones are green. And I just, I really think that it matches nicely with the, um, with the contrast color like I think that they really work well together like yes there are going to be bits where it's low contrast and I kind of like that um I actually have started knitting the color work and um it's like yes it's low contrast in some areas where there's like the blue and the teal but because the co contrast color is metallic it's it like stands out still and it, I, I think it's a really cool effect and I can't wait to see more how how it turns out but again I end up doing all these secret test knits so I can't tell you what it is or what it's about can't show you what it looks like really um, but it will come out later this year uh, the deadline for this test knit is September so um, I, I'm, it must be coming out in the fall or early winter but I am really excited for it and I love doing these test knits and of course, it's in my Pokemon bag by Silvershed USA. I just love this bag. I can't remember what was in this bag last week, but oh, maybe that might have been the socks. And then I have that in there. This It can't live in here forever because it's going to be a sweater. And this is a sock bag. <laughs> all right, so that is it for all that I'm currently working on. Um, I do have a few yarns to show you. Um, a few several of these are yarns that I bought during ZK um they're just little one-offs most of them um one is fish belly firework fiberworks um the color is zombie unicorn in tributary which is a hundred percent superwash merino fingering weight approximately 400 yards and oh my god zombie unicorn It is a super lovely speckled purple and pink and blue, green, yellow. It, it was their ZK um, colorway. Really enjoy it. It's, and it's like, I don't know, what's this considered? High twist, right? I love the various, text, various textures of yarn. Like, I really like these ones that you can see the twist so intensely, but I also really like singles. I don't know, they're all super good. Um, another ZK colorway that I have is Birch Hollow Fibers, and this one is Octavia Worsted in Shambling Horde. It's 100% Superwash Merino, 218 yards per 100 grams, and 
it looks like a shambling horde. It's a very Halloween color and I love it. It's like purples and that sort of like pukey green and grays and some browns. Um, and then yeah, like these bursts of purple, love it. Super fun. This could easily be something like hand warmers or something super fun for Halloween. So the next uh, couple yarns I might have shown on my Instagram story, um, but I didn't put them anywhere else. They are both from Orange Jellyfish Dream. I did buy a kit from Orange Jellyfish Dream once uh, in collaboration with Beautiful Sister. Uh, and uh, during ZK, they were having a sale. And so I bought um, this colorway Motley, which is a fingering weight, 438 yards, 100 grams, 100% superwash merino. And it's called Motley. And it's like, you guys, I could not say no to these speckles. It is like, oh my gosh, it is like so good. It's like a very nice silver color with these bright pops of speckles. It's a very, very precious skinny brand. This is the one I picked out and I could not be more happy with it, especially having tried dyeing myself. Um, speckles are hard, you guys. The second skein Steve picked out, and this is called Fire and Water, and it's the sock weight yarn. 462 yards, 100 grams, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Look at how bright this is. It is like insanely bright. So it's like, yeah, I get a deep navy with highlighter yellow, highlighter orange. They do a good fade, so you get a little bit of pinks and purples. And yeah, it's super lovely. Highly recommend the vibrant colors from Orange Jellyfish Dream. Whew. Yeah, it's a winner. So these next two are not from ZK, but um, the first one is from Malia Made It. It is the, I don't know why I'm looking on the tag. So Malia, as I've probably shown you before, does an amazing job. She makes it so fun. She puts um, stitch markers that match the colorway mostly. I think she does 10 each time. So I'll never need for stitch markers because I buy from her relatively often. Um, but the colorway is Shark on Vacation. Um, I bought it on the Platinum Shorty Sock. 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. It's a four ply fingering weight. And I bought the 50 gram and not the 100 gram because I believe for a pair of socks for me, like Shorty or like mid ankle for me is, uh, I wanna say around 43, 45 grams. And I don't remember. Yeah, it's a 50 gram, 230 yards and a 20 gram, 90 yards gain. So that's definitely enough for a pair of socks with me with a heel toe and maybe cuff um, in the uh, mini skein. So like, I really like the idea of being able to buy a little bit less because my feet are small. So this is perfectly acceptable for my feet. And she said that she dyed this with like a shark on the beach in mind. Like, like I think she might have described something to the effect of like, you know, sitting under an umbrella and sipping a drink and just really having a beachy time. And I really see where she was coming from with this. And then I just said, hey, give me one of the greens as the um, opposite color. I think, I think I gave her a couple choices. I typically do, or I let her pick something random because I don't really care what I get because I love all of her colors. So yeah, that's nice. This is for Shark Week. I participated in Shark Week 2019 and I did, um, I don't know what socks I did for that. It might have been in a different colorway of hers, like the mermaid, one of the mermaid colorways. Um, Mischievous Mer People maybe or something to that effect. I can't remember. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna like actively participate in Shark Week this year or Sock, sock Week, Shark Week, whatever. But um, I wanted the color, so I got it. And again, it was really cool to get the uh, 50 gram. And then lastly, okay, so 
Avatar The Last Airbender is sort of experiencing a revival and the show ha came on, I want to say the first, did the first book or the first season come out in 2006? I think so. I can't remember. Like it was really spotty. It's like they had the first season or maybe the first part of the first season. I don't know. But they had the first season on in some, some year that I was still like living at home. So maybe it was actually like earlier, like 2004, maybe or 2005 um and so I was like super into it and it was one of those things that it was on Nickelodeon it had some Nickelodeon humor but like I was like you guys no one understands how amazing the show is and then um when um uh, my boyfriend at the time and I lived in North Dakota we like had heard that the third season had started had started coming out but it wasn't being released in the United States and we didn't know when it was going to be released and that was like in prime like torrenting time like if you wanted anything you would torrent it I'm about to have a cat um and so it was airing I believe on Nickelodeon Canada and we had heard nothing about it being released in the United States so we would torrent every week the episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender from the third and final season and it was so amazing and so good and I loved it so much and then um when I started dating Steve in 2009 I was like you have not seen Avatar The Last Airbender you have to see it with me we have to watch it and so um on Thursdays something like that we'd have pizza Thursdays and he would come over to my apartment and um we would make like a pizza from scratch like you know um typically with some kind of taco pizza he wants kisses <laughs> and we would watch episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender and he ended up loving it um I remember like sitting like I don't have any furniture I had almost nothing in my apartment I had a computer I had my cats and I had a bed um, and I had a futon, a really cheap futon, like one of those like click clack kind of futons. And I think, and like, I would make people sit on like the janky futon we'd be watching from my computer, you know, like it was, or I would make everybody pile into my small bedroom and sit on my bed and sit on the floor and we would watch um, shows and Avatar and whatnot. So anyway, I love Avatar The Last Airbender and with it being put on Netflix, like it's really sort of re-sparking the interest and people are realizing what an amazing, deep, pure show that is. Um, and yeah, it's so good. Like I have um, like a big side tattoo and it is Avatar Last Airbender themed. It is um, the Koi, Twi, and La from the first season, the first book um, when they were in the Northern Water Tribe. So anyway, um, all this to say, there are more Avatar The Last Airbender yarns that are being released. Now, this company or this person, um, Valkyrie Fibers, Lauren Brian Wooster, um, she, does, she did two colorways and one um, I desperately wanted, but, I, but it was like early in the morning when she did the shop update and I totally like slept through it and missed it. Um, it was called Yip Yip and it was Appa Colors and um, like I have a stuffed appa that Steve got me. I want to say the first year we started dating, we live in Minnesota and we have Mall of America and Mall of America has Nickelodeon Universe and they have an Avatar ride. So that means they have Avatar merchandise. And um, he bought me an appa and I sleep with that appa. It is my stuffed animal. <laughs> God. Anyway, so I really wanted that. But the se my second choice, the second option, is um called harmony and it is um several sets or several um or like a couple colors per nation and so it is all of the nations represented and i want to say like see like there's a light blue and a dark blue and then there's like you know the orange and the red and the black um a light green and a dark green. like there's um when I saw it, it's a striping and so when I saw the stripes it looks really really good and it does look like Harmony and um she also gave a couple of, of stitch markers and yeah so it's 75% uh, superwash merino 75% nylon or 25% nylon 463 yards and I 
I mean, the colors are so like on point when I'm like looking and I'm like, this green is definitely tough, you know, like so is the yellow, right? And um, the blue is, you know, representing the, the water tribe and whatnot. Um, and yeah, the, the Zuko red, super Zuko. Um, yeah, it's so good. I really love it. <laughs> I wish I could have gotten both, but I love it. So yeah, if you haven't seen Avatar Last Airbender, you really should. So that's all I have for yarny things for you. <sighs> I know I talked a lot in the end there about yarns, but like I am the kind of person that will a lot of times prefer yarns that have some kind of like personal connection or meaning for me in addition to like it being pretty. Like yes, I will buy yarns that are just pretty, but I will specifically buy yarns that like resonate with me on like a deeper level also. And I like, those are like the kinds of yarns that I feel like I have to get. Um, yeah, so. It, and it's kind of the reverse too sometimes. Sometimes I'll see like a really pretty yarn and it will have a name that I really do not resonate with or I don't like or I have no connection to it. I think I've mentioned this recently because um, I was thinking specifically of like Doctor Who's. There's a couple of Doctor Who colorways that are that in some yarns that are really pretty that I just didn't have a connection with so I didn't buy because it's like I feel like I'm buying from a fandom that I'm not a part of, you know? So I guess that can have negative consequences for people who are not connected to the fandoms or the things that I like, right? But anyway. Let's see, life stuff. Um, uh, recently, uh, Steve and I have been really involved in like, um, there are some people in groups that he is a part of that have started streaming on Twitch. And I, again, I think I might've mentioned this last time, but um, we've been really involved in um, people getting like their stream set up and like having fun and just hanging out with friends and playing fun games. Um, like uh, there is uh, one person who we have watched, can, like I think we've, I think we watched every one of his streams since he started, since we discovered him. Like, I don't remember if he was streaming a mixer earlier and then Steve found him or, or what was going on there. But I just remember that Steve started watching him on a mixer and then right after that mixer shut down and then he went on to Twitch and it's, um, I'll put his information in the uh, show notes, but um, his name is Nolan and it's Apocalypse Angel is his um, handle and it has like numbers in there. So I will like add that stuff. But right now he is playing through Roller Coaster Tycoon and it has been so, so fun to watch him play that because like the original Roller Coaster Tycoon and then probably like, I don't know, two or three, maybe all three, I don't know. Um, like as a kid, I really didn't think that hard about like game titles. So I have difficulty like saying like, um, Steve and I got into an argument like about whether I grew up playing Paperboy 1 or play Paperboy 2 on the Nintendo and like the, the NES. And um, I was so insistent that it was Paperboy 1 because I didn't remember a 2. And granted, I think if you look at the cartridge, it does like the 2 is kind of weird, but it's like, I didn't pay that close of attention. I had Paperboy, I put Paperboy in my NES and then I played it, right? It was Paperboy 2, to be clear. I was wrong. Um, but anyway, the Roller Coaster Tycoon games, the original ones, um, I played and my sister played all the time growing up. Like we were totally into like the original Roller Coaster Tycoons and um, the original Sims. And um, we had a bunch of other games on the side, um, but those are other, those are some really big impactful games. And so it's been so fun to like see the sights and hear the sounds and like see like it's like when you played pokemon growing up and you thought like there was all these like mystical unknowables about like stats and how they leveled up and what ended up being a critical hit and like what made a good pokemon versus a bad pokemon and then like people like me who'd never even thought that there was a purpose to researching any of that and then you grow up and you become an adult and you find out there's like a lot of math involved and it is very like particular and it's a it's a computer program you know like all of that stuff and it just like shatters your whole understanding and um so it's funny to go back to a game like roller coaster tycoon and see like how manipulatable some things are or just like the way that you thought as a kid is so different than the way that you think as an adult and so yeah that's been really fun um, 
yeah, it's it's been it's been a lot of fun, and I've been exposed to several games that either from my past or games that I haven't seen played, but I, I'm interested in or had never heard of, but I'm now very interested in. So that's been really cool, and I'm like, it's like nice to have a community when you don't have a lot of in-person community right now, and like I like that additional connection, um, and sharing and like pumping each other up and like being positive and you know that kind of thing. It's been it's been really neat. But yeah, that's basically all I have for you today. Um, I hope that you have had a good couple of weeks, and um, I. I feel like there's a lot that I'm leaving out because I t have been winging it these days and not writing any um, little notes for myself. So if I forgot anything, I'm sorry. I will hopefully bring it up soon. And um, find me on Instagram. Let's chat. Thank you for watching. If you don't subscribe, consider subscribing. Um, feel free to leave me a comment or let me know what you think. And I uh, will talk to you soon. Bye.